Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Friday Afternoons Facebook Live. Today is Friday, January 8th, 2021. Uh, promised I would be back today, and I have a uh, video for you, or a project for you again, featuring the Salmon Sea. Uh, sweet, sorry, my tablet is not cooperating with me. Okay, here we go. And hopefully the volume is off and I'm not going, no, it's not. Okay, there we're good now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I always seem to have a little stumble at the beginning. Anyway, we're going to do, it's not going to be a fancy fold today, but I am going to share a, a project with you using the Sun and Sea Suite, same suite that I used on Wednesday, but a little bit different take. Um, yeah, and using a different element, I am bringing in the designer series paper. So let's get started, shall we? And let me turn you down and around. Make everybody seasick while I'm at it. Move this up you all in view. Anyway, here is the card that I am going to share with you today. So I have used the designer series paper and some of the stamps from the suite as well as the um, opal rounds embellishments that come in the suite. And the greetings that I'm using today are also from a different stamp set, um, Fine Art our art gallery, part of the fine art floral suite. So shall we get started? So what we have today is we have an eight and a half by five and a half seaside spray card base scored at four and a quarter. Uh, we have some scraps of whisper white here and a couple of pieces which I'll give you the dimensions for in a minute for our greeting. We have two pieces of four by five and a quarter whisper white, and then we have a two by five and a quarter piece of the designer series paper. Let me show you this paper. So this is the sheet that we worked off of, and here is the backside, so sand dollars. We've got seashells, and then on the back side of that, we have something that looks very much like sand. And this is the one that we just looked at. And then again, some more sunshine and water for colors. Um, starfish and some great pink and yellow swirls and some more sand dollars. And then another beautiful wa watercolor wash of the yellow, the pink and the blue with shells and starfish and then the last one is the blue sort of waves and some dots so that is what the designer series paper looks like in that suite so let's get started so we have a few oh, I'm trying to think of the best order to do this in I think what we need to do is take those pieces out of the way Actually, we need to take that piece out of the way for now as well. I have some scraps, so we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. So you may have noticed I have two tone on the shells here. And really, that was so very simple. So I, on this scrap, I'm going to do the larger shell. Hmm. My dog is barking, I'm not sure why. There must be something in the yard. So I have uh, crumb cake and seaside spray ink here and basically all I'm going to do is take my stamp and I'm going to stamp part of it in seaside spray and then I'm going to overlap and stamp part of it in crumb cake and I'm just, you just want to make sure that you've got ink everywhere. Ooh, not happy with that one. Let me try this again. <clears throat> A little less 
custom cake, I think, in more blue. And photopolymer, and I don't have a foam mat under here, so I should let it sit for a minute. Ah, oh, much better. Set those aside. And then on here, I have the larger shell. And with it, I'm going to ink it up with Blushing Bride and Sahara Sand. Oh, and my fingers, I don't know, arthritis maybe? I don't know. Hard to open the cases today. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do the top part of this in the Sahara Sand, and I'll turn it and get some blushing bright. And of course your ink colors are going to overlap. Just and then I have this one here. I'm going to stamp that one in the blushing bride. And the small one here in Sahara sand. Move our ink out of the way. Now a little bit of fussy cutting has to happen here, sorry to say. And I think that I will, I had um, put a fairly wide white border on this when I cut it last time, but I think I will cut it a little tighter to the image. It really doesn't take very long. And then we're gonna do something really fun with this. Again, if you haven't watched me go through a fussy cut before, most of the time you just want to move the paper. You get a much smoother, less sort of jagged intervals, if you will. And your corners your points there, they round very nicely when it's the paper that's moving rather than the scissors. This is a big one, probably takes the longest. The others don't take very long. <clears throat> so there's one. And let's do our bigger shell here, or other bigger shell, I should say. This one will go quite quickly. Fewer turning points, I suppose. So here we are in Alberta on the 8th of January when it's normally like crazy cold, like a minus 20 or 30 in January is not unheard of. And actually today's gonna be one of the coldest days we've had for in a few and for a while with our high at minus three. So how crazy is that? And we have, I don't know, not even a foot of snow on the ground. Usually we have several feet, so I'm not going to complain. It just seems really weird. <laughs> I've lived in Alberta my entire life, and this is just really strange. Now, these ones, you can fussy cut them, or I could have stamped them direct. I did fussy cut them because I had different plans than my original. And so that's what I'm going to do for you today. But you could just stamp, because these are going to go on the inside. You could just stamp them directly on the inside of the card if you wanted to. But they don't take very long. And for next, I want to apologize because I had promised to have some stuff up on my blog that didn't happen. Um, 
my daughter is going through a major move. Um, she's leaving the province and her husband is already where they're going. So she's at home, working from home, trying to organize a move, carry for two uh, pre well, not quite preschoolers. The oldest is in kindergarten. So she's got a lot on her plate. So I've been trying to, if not on the phone, I actually went and visited her yesterday to help get rid of some stuff for her. And of course we have lockdown here where we're not really supposed to be visiting anybody, but we were all social distanced and masked and tried to follow all the protocols that we could, um, just in an attempt to help her. So I am probably gonna be a little intermittent and or, and or <laughs> a little late in getting some of my stuff as I try and help her. Um, more important that she make this move and, and be calm to me than anything else at this point in time. Okay, so there's our shelf all cut out. Now, let's just set these aside for a second. We have a bit of embossing to do, so let's do that, shall we? So, the front piece of our card is actually embossed with the subtle embossing folder. And I have my grain line, if you will, going horizontal. It's a horizontal card, so I'm going to put it in, in the folder this way. And with this machine, it's your base plate, your folder with a cardstock, and plate four, because it's a 3D embossing folder. And let's just put that through. So that one is ready. And then the other thing that I did this time around, this is, we used this last time, this is, this is the embossing folder that comes with the Sand and Sea Suite. I'm going to emboss on these stamped images. Now what I, oh, I've got to kind of line it up. Oh there, that will help if I get the orientation right. And if you want it to stay in place, let me do this first. So if you put a little piece of washi tape on the back, that will hold them. We're going to do this twice, so because my washi tape tore all weird. This is really old. We don't even carry washi tape anymore, I don't think. Not that I can remember anyway. But I always keep some around. It's very handy because it's like a temporary adhesive tape. Okay, I'm just going to stick those on there for a sec. All right, let's line this back up, shall we? Okay, so bring this here so you can see what I'm doing. So I can see through the folder where the shell lines are, and that's all lined up. And I'm just gonna put a piece of washi tape on there to hold it in place. And then the other one that I wanna add texture to is the other large shell. If I can pick it up. And again, see through, I don't know, I hope you can. Oh, that one moved. So shouldn't move very far. Maybe if I do this, yes, bring it up. Put this other piece of washi tape that just escaped me. Oh shoot, where'd it go? <laughs> this is not the one I wanted. It's gonna show up somewhere I don't want it, but that's okay. I'm just gonna put that across here. And it just holds those in place. Oh, there it is <laughs> on the back of the folder. That's funny. Well, a little extra won't hurt. Anyway, so they're held in place now. So they're going to emboss exactly where I want them to. So that's my little tip there. Okay. So like I said, it's a semi-permanent. So we're going to pull that washi tape off. We are going to try and pull that washi tape off. A little tougher because it's embossed. But carefully it should come.
and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is texture. You can definitely see it in person, whether you can see it on, on the camera. I'm not 100% sure about that. Got this all stuck to, oh, stuck piece on there. All stuck to my fingers. Ah. Now, before I'm done with these, I want to add a little glimmer to them because I like glimmer. Got some Wink Estella here. I'm just going to spread it all over the two big shells to make it sparkle a little bit. Definitely brings out the color and emphasizes the texture that is there. If I turn that, I don't know if you can see it or not. We'll get it started. We can always add more later once we add it to our pro project. Ooh, this Wink Estelle brush is just about done. Anyway, streaks don't show with this so you don't have to be careful. Just apply it as evenly as you can all over and that's going to add some glimmer. All right. Spread those out of the way. Here is our card base. As I said, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And we're going to burnish it really nicely. And then we're going to take our textured piece, so the piece that we put through the subtle embossing folder, and that's going to go on the front of our card. I wasn't very organized. I didn't even have my glue out yet. So if you're trying to conserve glue, because you really can with this. You do not need to do the full frame like I often do. You can just do some spots like that. And then we're going to add this piece of the designer series paper so it's five and a quarter by two inches. And I would do the ends at least fairly. Actually, I probably do it all over. You're adding it to a textured piece. And you just want to line that at the sides and the bottom. Just like that. And then we're going to add our shells. So these are popped up with dimensionals. So we'll put the big one on first. So this one, look at this, it's okay. Washi tape won't hurt if it didn't come off. And it's a Fairly, it's a big and odd sized piece, so I think that I will add four dimensionals to the back of that. And how did I put it? Oh, I don't like that. Now this one is going to overlap here, so we're not going to want to put any dimensional along this edge here. It goes by that, but we'll put one there, one there, and one near the bottom. To the top, bottom, and on the right hand side of the shell, which is this side, I believe. Yes. Don't trust myself. <laughs> stamp our greeting. Like I said, the greetings came from the art gallery stamp set out of the Fine Art Floral Suite. And I have, um, what stamps do I have here? I have, I'm thinking of you, and I'm going to stamp this in crumb cake. Now, when I've got a, so this piece is two and five eighths by a half inch. And Sorry, I just bumped the camera a bit. Shuck, I'm sorry. I like to use lined or grid paper so that I can, I'll see if I can do a little better. It's a little bit high. Sometimes it's hard on white on white to figure out where you are. Mm, perfect. 
And then I'm just gonna glue that onto, this is 5 8 by two and three quarters. That's why we have two sides on every piece of cardstock so we can have a practice and a, or a do over if you will. And then we're gonna put a couple of dimensionals on the back of that. And I like to have it up here in the cor upper right hand corner. Okay, so the only thing left to do on the front of our card is to bring in these opal rounds. And I use three small ones. Always want to keep these embellishments in an odd number placement. And somewhat random, like that. And then on the inside, I have stamped Best Wishes, again in Crumb Cake. And I glued these other two seashells inside. that one and the orientation of this one is entirely up to you and then add that to the inside of our card get near the end of the roll so it's starting to pull back in a little bit but I've had very good luck with this particular roll I think I finally I know I've said this before but I'm getting more and more comfortable with this new stamp and seal and there's the inside and of course it's stamp or cut additional uh, seashells for the envelope now I'm looking at this thing there is not quite enough glitter on those shells for my liking there may be or you may not want any so I'm just gonna come back in with my wink of Stella and add a little bit more glimmer to these popped up seashells makes the color a little richer And there we go. I don't know if you can see the shimmer there or not. But there you go. So that is my card for you today. If there is anything that I can get for you uh, regarding Stampin' Up! product, please drop me a line or go to my online store. You can get into my online store really easily through parklandstamper.com. Uh, and if you use the host code that's shown on the screen, you'll get a little something in the mail from me. Uh, I have an event um, that a flyer went out for, and I will update the events page that is uh, taking part on, or taking place, sorry, on uh, January 30th. Myself as part of my outlines team uh, are putting on a full day online event featuring the fine out art floral suite of products. Uh, registration deadline is the 17th of January and that's either a $60 uh, minimum order. There is a different host code for that and it will get updated in the events page or a $35 class fee and for that you will get uh, six make and takes in a kit and there will be 13 videos uh, some live, some pre-recorded from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Time. 
and we'll all live in a private Facebook page. So if you're interested in that, drop me a line and I can get you some more details. I'd uh, love to have you join. I have a couple of people that have already joined from my customer base and they're, I, I looked this morning, I can't remember, there's 18 or 20 of us so far. Uh, this could be a really, it's going to be a really fun day. We did this uh, back in October for World Card Making Day. And we've stepped it up because we've had a little bit more time to plan. Uh, the week, or the six days preceding the event, um, we will have a live video every day featuring one of the products out of the celebration brochure. So lots and lots of inspiration. So if you're interested, please drop me a line and we'll hook you up. Thanks for watching. Bye.